Hi, Steve Ray from Berkshire Real Estate. I'm here with another episode of Park Bench Pittsfield, and today I'm here with Lieutenant Randy Stein of the Pittsfield Fire Department. Hey, Thanks Steve. for coming in today, Randy. Thanks for having me. So, Randy, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and how long you've been and the position you're in and how long you've been in the fire fighting business? Okay, I started in 1995 as a firefighter, uh, 25 years ago. Uh, and then I, I moved into the inspection bureau about 14 years ago. Um, now, 25 years later, you know, here I am. Now I'm in charge of the inspection bureau. I have two uh, inspectors that work under me. I also do inspections, and we should be getting a fourth inspector in any time. Really? So you have a, a military background? You're a veteran? Yeah, I'm a disabled Army veteran. I um, did four years at active Army, Desert Storm. Yeah, and after that, I came back here, worked in some of the local mills, things like that, took the civil service exam. And two tries later, I got it because I didn't have residence in preference until I moved to Pittsville. And then here you are today, here 25 I am. years later. <laughs> so maybe tell everybody what a, a day in the life of a fire inspector is. Uh, we come in in the morning, we look at our set schedule that we have, you know, inspections for the day. We split it up between the inspectors that are available. Uh, it could be anything from home sale inspections, um, certificate of inspections for um, places that have liquor licenses or they have assembly spaces, we do those in conjunction with the building inspector. Um, that's something really nice about Pittsfield is we work in, in very tightly with the building inspector. Uh, a lot of municipalities over the state, that's not the case. You know, they do not work well together. We would rather go out and do the inspection with them, have the extra set of eyes, do it all at once, instead of interfering with the business more than once, um, to where we have to shut down power, set off the alarm, things like that. Um, so we do work well. We have a new building commissioner too, so that, and he works very well with us. Um, we do uh, educational. I teach seniors, I teach adults, I teach kids. Uh, in the schools, I do the kids. We do a lot of uh, talks, educational talks at businesses. I've done it a couple times for the uh, realty, uh, Board of Realtors. Right. I haven't had been invited to that in a while. Hopefully we get to go back to that. And we like to talk to a whole bunch of realtors at once. Right. Give them all the same information at once. Make sure they understand the rules. Yeah. So we do a lot of that. And uh, ultimately, if, if there's enough um, emergencies going on, sometimes we actually jump on and have to man one of the fire engines. So let's talk about <laughs> that for a minute. So there's a, a, a firefighting, the suppression side of the business. Correct. And then, and then there's, there's the prevention, prevention and code side. enforcement. And yep. then, so your last few years, you you've focused on that but yes um, maybe explain to us how important that role is in preventing oh, the it's suppression a, side from having to go to you know, uh, and you know what it's a hidden side we really don't get to see we don't always know when we're you know geez I told somebody to get rid of that extension cord that was running under the carpet or through the we don't know that may have started a fire may not have started a fire we don't know uh, but it's so like I said it, all we can say is you know, we can look at the fire deaths, fire injuries, and then actual fires, but it also depends on your housing uh, stock. You know, are they all knob and tube? Is this and that, or is the house is getting updated? So, um, but fire prevention is kind of like the silent, you know, we don't get to see, we don't, we're not, we're not in the news, we're not in the paper, we're not carrying the, the child out of the fire, things like that. Right. Um, but we know we're making a difference. We sure. are. So um, maybe, um, now I know certainly, uh, as a real estate agent all these years. Not all the rules at first glance make sense to us, uh, but at the end of the day, a rule like uh, maybe you could address, uh, here's a question I have all the time, why do I need a permit from the fire department to have a dumpster? <laughs> uh, it's actually a, a state law now, they adopted National Fire Protection Association 1, NFPA 1, is a state fire code law and in there it says if you have a metal rubbish container um, larger than one and a half cubic yards has to have a permit oh no, sorry has to be at least 10 feet from the building six cubic yards and larger has to have a permit from the fire department because if it's within 10 feet and it's there overnight somebody could flip a cigarette in there something could happen and it ends up burning down the building um, they, had so bad, the, they had a bad fire over on Downing Industrial several years ago. It was an industrial property. The dumpster was too close. started on fire. And they actually made plastic parts for medical use. So that smoke got in the building. They said it was, they said it was like a half a million dollar loss. The insurance company walked away because they didn't have the dirt, the permit, far enough away. 
uh, for the dumpster and they did not have a permit. So the insurance company said, and we tell people the insurance companies are better at the codes than we are because if you can prevent them from having to pay out a, a claim, they need to know it. So something like that isn't to raise money. No. A fee. We it's don't do it. It's a public safety fire And prevention. this is a state law. Some of, the, some of the cities and towns enforce it. Some don't have the manpower um, to enforce it. But it's just to make sure but that it's out there. Too close and just to the because house. somebody's not in Pittsfield, that they can be in one of the hill towns, and if they have this trouble on the front, it doesn't mean the insurance company's not going to say, that's a state law. You know, you weren't supposed to have it that close. So we do educate the dumpster companies. And we get new ones. Every now and then one pops up. We'll see a dumpster we haven't seen before. I'll give them a call because their number is supposed to be on the dumpster. I give them a call and I inform them. You know, in Pittsfield, it will be at a certain distance away minimum and you will have that permit prior to being placed. And they're like, okay. And a lot of times it's just an education. That's how 99% of my job is just educating people on the codes and regulations. We do give the background sometimes as to why that happened. Or we give them, we always give them the documentation saying this is where it references it. Um, that's, we want to enforce through education. Now, we know is uh, today with more modern equipment, smoke detectors and all of that, maybe there isn't a lot, as many fires as there used to be years ago, but the chief is, uh, was just in the paper the other day talking about some yeah, some accidents and uh, yeah, a lot of electrical fires lately from, not from home wiring so much, but from overloaded uh, power strips, um, extension cords, things like that. And he came up with a great thing. There's always new ones coming out. If you, if you cook, if you cool with it, heat with it, or cook with it, it's not supposed to be plugged into any of those items. It should be plugged directly into the wall. Because that means it's going to draw a lot of power. Uh, you never plug a strip into a strip. Um, today, I found a couple extension cords on, on the certificate of inspections that we did at a commercial space, and you just can't have it. I said, if you're plugging it in to operate a vacuum, that's temporary use. Other than that, the, the wiring code does not allow you, electrical code does not allow you to use those devices in a commercial space. We usually give them until the, the next annual inspection, have an electrician come in and put in actual outlets for you. You need them there. If you've got an extension cord or a, a, a power strip, you need more outlets. So we give them that year um, to do it. So, so when you're not in a fireman, <laughs> when you're not out inspecting all day or on the back of a truck, what do you do for fun? Um, I mentioned, yeah, we got a new pontoon boat last year. Been wanting one for years, and the wife said, let's do it. So we, and we saw you out a couple times, you know, yep. you were kayaking around. Yep. But we went to the local lakes, like I said, anything within an hour we went to. The favorite one was Harriman Reservoir up in Vermont. Beautiful body of water about an hour from here. So you, you have a trailer and you actually drive yep. it to the lakes? Yeah, I, I, I don't leave places. it at a dock. I put it in. It's only a 16-foot pontoon. I tow with my Jeep. Easy in and out. And that um, way you get to experience all, all over the place. Get to know all the lakes. Um, I do woodworking at home. I got a little wood shop and, and just home maintenance. You know, I, I have a house up in, in Lanesboro and uh, it's a constant, you know, you have to constantly, if you're not making something better, you're maintaining what's there. So, circling back to the fire department, how many uh, how many guys are in the department now? Uh, we average around 100 now, and it's not just guys. All oh, right, we have right. we have two women on the department oh, now. Uh, it took a long time, but yeah, we have women on the fire department. So now it's firefighters, not firemen. Right. Firefighters, <laughs> right. I guess right. I'll make sure I've got that right. Uh, and my daughter is actually a full-time uh, Chicopee firefighter for the last two years. Oh no, kid! Yeah, she's over in Chicopee. Oh, that's great. Yeah, following in my footsteps over there. So, so just quickly a summary of uh, the services aren't just about fire. No, it's not just fires, and and and, and you know we do we sometimes pump basements because uh, there's a, a hazard to a certain point if the burner's underwater or if it's up to the panel things like that then we have to have utilities cut um, we help a lot of medical somebody's falling down somebody needs even the ambulance calls for a lift assist if somebody that's that's uh, oversized that we have to help them just in just in maybe transporting them into the doctor so they can go see their doctor things you like that first responders. we do yeah lift assist um, we're all EMT level uh, basic. Uh, we have our defibrillator training and all that. I just renewed my EMT card because uh, I do still work on the floor. You know, and there are on paramedics the fire in the yep. too. No, no paramedics. No. We don't no. have paramedic level. Oh, you don't? No. So, um, what, anything new coming down? I know that you, that you talked about uh, some things to help 
homeowners and real estate agents understand smoke. Oh yeah, when I talked to you, uh, we're trying to do up a decision tree. Uh, it's a couple page, uh, two page document where it'll say, okay, pre-1975 construction, here's your decision tree, okay, it's battery powered uh, smoke and seal detectors, but the house had a renovation after that that triggered some hard wires or an alarm system, but so we'll have that. And then there's um, 75 and up in the building code. 70s to 80s may have two hard wires scattered, but they didn't interconnect. And then the late 80s to 90s, it was on every level, they were connected. And then late 90s, in and outside the bedroom and at all levels. So it's So you're going to put together changed. something that someone can follow yeah. and understand it. We're going to have it on the site down below. Yeah. Uh, so you make sure you check anytime. And, and, and if not, we're, if that still doesn't do it, we're available. Regular business hours, 448 uh, 9764 is our permit office. Uh, if I'm not physically there, one of my inspectors, Andrew in the office, will get a hold of us, take down your number, and we'll return your call as soon as possible. That's we great. do that all the time. And that's not just Pittsfield. Sometimes the chief loans us out to other departments. You know, other chiefs, or he has the chiefs call us if they if they need something. Right. Uh, we're a resource. That's so. great. Well, Randy Stein, Pittsfield Fire Department, keeping the community safe through prevention, education, and enforcement. <laughs> and enforcement. Randy Stein, Pittsfield Fire Department. Thanks for coming Thanks. in, Randy.